All right, guys, so today we are going to be learning about, uh, we're going to continue to learn about George Washington Carver, but first we're going to do the pledges. So go ahead and stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Would you please remain standing for a moment of silence? Thank you. You may be seated. Today for lunch, we have sweet sour chicken, celery sticks, carrot sticks, uh, broccoli pieces, egg rolls, and oranges. For me, tomorrow is a $1 D day. Also, tomorrow is September 11th, and if you so desire, you may wear a black shirt or a any red, white, or blue shirt. Uh, that you will not need to pay a dollar to do that. You can just wear it if you want. You also don't need to wear jeans in order to do that. So tomorrow, red, white, or and blue or red, white, or blue, or a black shirt, if you so desire. I hope you all have a great day. Okay, so yesterday we learned about George Washington Carver. Does anybody remember who he was? Go ahead, Kenton. Bella, who do you think he was? Who do you remember him? What was he a scientist of? Plants. Uh, plants. Yeah. Can y'all say botanist? botanist? Botanist is a scientist who studies plants. So good job. Does anybody remember what he created? Omar? Remember he planted crops? The crop. Yeah, the crop row. Crop rotation. So he helped create a crop rotation where uh, farmers, he helped them with farmers, so every year they plant a different crop. So that's how um, that's how they get the nutrients in the soil, right? All right, guys, so we're going to continue with George Washington Carver, and then um, we'll, I'll explain what your assignment is for social studies, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to Tim and Moby. Hey, where'd you get that? Hey, where'd you get that? You made it yourself. No way. You made it yourself. No way. Dear Tim and Moby, Dear Tim, I heard about this guy who invented guy a million things with peanuts. Can you tell me about him? Curious. Okay. Carver did some pretty amazing, amazing things with peanuts. During, During his career, career, he used them to create over 300 distinct products. products. But Carver's, Carver's rise, rise to fame as the, as the peanut, peanut man is only a small, small part, part of the story. He was an he agricultural, agricultural scientist studying how soil chemistry, chemistry affects, affects crop yields, yields. But, he but he didn't just stay in the lab. lab. He, he persuaded farmers around the country to adopt more scientific practices. And that, and that makes, makes him one of the most influential, influential scientists, scientists of his day. His achievements are all the more impressive given the struggles, struggles he faced as an African American. American. Carver, Carver was born into slavery in Missouri during, during the Civil, Civil War. War. His, his father, father died, died before he was born. Shortly, Shortly after, after that, that, slave traders kidnapped his mother, mother from the plantation. So the owners, owners Moses, Moses and Susan Carver, raised George themselves. themselves. As a, As a child, Carver struggled, struggled with illness. Stuck, stuck indoors, he developed, he developed a close connection to Susan Carver. Carver. She, she talked about herbal medicines, medicines and George, and George totally became fascinated with plants. His, His obsession grew into expertise. expertise. Neighbors, Neighbors began, began calling him the plant, plant doctor. doctor. They, they came to him for advice on caring for the health of their gardens. gardens. Farmers, Farmers were in awe of Carver's intellect and knowledge. But despite his brilliance, he was barred from attending a local school. Slavery had ended with the Civil War, but life in the post-war post South was defined by segregation, the forced separation of races. African Americans were often mistreated and not given the same opportunities as white people. He 
and his team George left home in search of a formal education. He landed at Iowa State Agricultural College, where he was the first African-American student. He majored in botany. No, it's the study of plants. He earned his master's degree at Iowa, and he went to a respected academic. That caught the attention of Booker T. Washington. Washington was the leader of the Tuskegee Institute, one of America's first black colleges. He invited Carver to head the agricultural department at Tuskegee. Even though the position paid far less, Carver took the job. He was excited to mentor African American students. Carver also hoped his work could help farmers across the rural South. Christopher, can you open the door for Bella? It requires huge amounts of nitrogen to grow properly. Growing hot year after year was draining the soil of the nutrients. Eventually, the fields couldn't grow much of anything. In response, Harvard promoted the idea of crop rotation. He urged farmers to alternate their crops each growing season, swapping in something like sweet potatoes kept the soil healthy. It prevented nitrogen depletion and led to a more diverse yield. Crop rotation, crop rotation has been around, around for centuries, centuries but, but Carver helped, helped refine it to a, well, a science. science. He conducted a series of experiments to figure out which plants, plants have the strongest nitrogen-fixing nitrogen properties. That is, which ones restore the most nitrogen to the soil. soil. Two, Two crops stood out, soybeans and peanuts. To help shape his discovery, Carver used the nitrogen to help with the Jessup way. Harvard taught farmers throughout, throughout the, the South about soil nutrition. By swapping soybeans, peanuts, and sweet potatoes, they were able to keep growing cotton. There was, there was just, just one little problem. problem. Crop rotation was difficult to achieve. Harvard found that it was just one little problem. Farmers weren't sure, sure what, what to do with all those peanuts. His peanuts, peanuts weren't, weren't very widely used. used. Farmers, farmers couldn't make much money from them. To boost demand, Harvard developed hundreds of peanut-based products. Items like soap, paper, shaving cream, lotion, flour, and, and insulation. In a, In a few years, the peanut market was booming. Carver didn't stop there. there. He, also he also came up with, with new uses for, for sweet potatoes, potatoes like, like shoe polish and rope. rope. Carver's inventiveness earned the admiration of world leaders and his fellow scientists. He helped, he helped auto manufacturer Henry Ford create... Uh, uh, no. no. They, they collaborated, collaborated to create a peanut-based peanut replacement, replacement for rubber. rubber. Yeah, yeah Carver's resourcefulness was an inspiration to millions of people. He improved the lives of farmers and, and boosted the, the southern, southern economy. economy. Some, Some even say he saved it. it. It's, not it's not a sports drink. You just, just pour peanut, peanut oil, oil in a bottle. bottle. <laughs> Don't be a Goober. Goober. All right, so that was wa George Washington Carver. I'm going to go ahead and exit. So I'm going to show you what your activity is, okay? So what we're going to do is um, Mrs. Fullington is going to read you the story, and then you're going to go back and answer the questions, okay? So let me go ahead and get to our seesaw. All right, so here is what you're going to be doing at the bottom. This is your, your job. So you're going to answer all five questions, but Mrs. Fullington is going to read this to you, okay? Because it it's very small, okay? So it says, George Washington Carver. So let me blow it up. That way we can see it. Is that better? A lot better. All right, George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was born in Missouri in 1864. His mother was a slave that belonged to a couple named Moses and Susan Carver. When George was a week old, George and George, his mother and, and brother were kidnapped or taken from their home during the night. Moses Carver paid someone to help find them. They found George and his brother alive. The Carvers decided to raise the boys as their own children, and they taught him to read and write. From the time George was a child, he loved nature and he always spent his time outside observing and looking at plants and making drawings in his journal. What does observing mean? 
Omar? To discover or, or to study, right? Yeah. In 1890, at 26 years old, he was accepted at Simpson College in Iowa. After graduating from college, he was offered a job as a teacher. In 1896, George took a job as a director of the Agricultural Department. So this is a person that helps animals and plants um, in the farm field. So like horses, pigs, cows. He also did cotton, corn, sweet potatoes, soybeans. So that's part of the Agriculture Department. At the Institution of Tuskegee, Tuskegee, I think, George worked there for 20 years. During that time, he began to investigate or discover different ways to make the crops grow better by making experiments. So just like in STEM lab, you do experiments? Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow we're doing a big one. Yeah, you're about to do one in STEM lab. So he also did experiments with the peanut plants. So that meant that farmer, or well, hold on, it says the results of this experiments was the rotation of crops. Remember crop rotation? This meant that farmers would plant different crops on the same land to make the soil more fertile or make it more healthier. So it has all the vitamins and the nutrients that it needs to grow the plants. This would help control insects and sickness. Carver also studied and found more than a hundred uses for peanut, including peanut butter. He died in 1943. Before he died, he gave more than $60,000 to the George Washington Carver Foundation. So this foundation also helped other scientists go to school. So he lived his life happy by helping others. So here are your questions. Oh, the first one's really important. What is the passage mainly about? So you don't answer it now. Is it A, Peanuts, B, George Washington Carver, C, Tus Tuskegee In Institute, or, or D, Slavery? Two says, what does the word kidnap mean? So you need to find that word in the story, underline it where it says what it means, and then you can circle your answer to make sure you got the right one, okay? So we know that right here, the word kidnap is right here. So you need to go back and look at it, what it says. Mm -hmm. Number three says, how many years did George work at the Tuskegee um, Institute? A, 10 years, B, 26 years, C, two years, or D, 20 years. So you might have to do some math here. So you have to be careful with this one. So you have to go back in the story and find where he, wor he worked at the Tuskegee Institute. Okay. So four says, what happened after Carver graduated from college? What was his next step after he went to college? So you're going to find that answer in the story too. Number five says, what about something you like to, what, write about something you would like to invent. So what would you like to invent? This is not a right or wrong answer. So you're just going to be honest and then you're going to tell me what you would like to create or invent. Remember, to invent means it's what somebody has not created before. So you can't take an idea that's already been created. And we'll talk about that more whenever we get to that question, okay? Never ever created. Okay, so go ahead and go to your seesaw and you may complete this um, story, okay?